this is my second TEDx, but I'm nervous. Even I have a lot of chances to step on big stage, uh, record it on TV, and watch by millions of people. I'm still nervous. But before I introduce myself, I want to ask you a question. Do you know this character? Yeah. Now imagine you have the power of Thanos from the Avengers, but instead of using the Infinity Stone to wipe out half of the universe, you have something far more potent. What is it? Your words. Just a snap of Thanos could wipe out half the universe, a single word from you can either uplift someone or bring them down. Isn't that a superpower worth considering? Hi, I'm Thuy Ting, and I'm the second runoff of Miss Cosmo Vietnam 2022. And I'm also a co-founder of Pacho Pocha. We, I have two restaurants, and there's about to be a third one. So please support me. You know, through my journeys with words have shown their incredible power to transform lives for better or worse. Uh, words can kill and words can also heal. They have the ability to shape the world around you. They in influence your thoughts and also they impact lives in profound ways. So today I'll share you why it's crucial to choose what to speak out, to choose our words when we uh, say something to anyone, like the one who is sitting next to you. Okay. Wow, I'm still nervous. But, um, okay, let's move to this part. Let's on such a memory. Have you ever been crossed by a single harsh comment that leaves you scars for years? The scar that is deeper than any physical wounds. Anyone, please raise your hand. You know, like when you step out of your house, someone say uh, you're wearing something bad, but I'll tell my story. I'll tell me, I'll tell my story. This is me like uh, four years ago, four years ago. Uh, when I was a kid, my relatives repeatedly told me to lose weight saying that no one will ever dare to marry you with that figure, honey, lose weight, lose weight. And as I grew older during my high school period, I was called an elephant during a talk of war competition, a contest that I spent all of my courage to compete in with my classmates because I thought I could be useful. And right now, as a person who is standing on the stage today, and uh, you know, I've drawn many beauty pageants, and I'm the second runner of Miss Cosmo, people still call me as this. You can read the comment. This is just a few of it. But if you ask me, am I hurt by these words right now? My honest answer will be no. I love these. I treasure these because these make me who I am today. I'm stronger, determined, I know what my purpose in life is. But in the past, these hurtful words did haunt me for years and casting a long shadow over my self-esteem. I struggle from anxiety, I struggle from uh, self-doubt and also social withdrawal. As I internalized the belief that I would, I was not good enough, that I would never be accepted by who I am. See, so this realization has led me to see the dual nature of words and the transformative your voice can hold. So words can be devastating like Thanos snap, wiping out your joy and confidence, but they have uh, one thing that is special if they can kill, you can use it to build and cheer, not to wound and bring fear. I've, ge I've given you the example of why words hurt. Now I'm giving you how it can heal. Do any of you that are there know about this character? Yeah, he inspired me a lot and he is Nick Vujicic an inspiring individual born without limbs. And uh, 
he credits his the encouraging and positive words from his friends and parents for empowering him to overcome the daily challenges of his condition. And their constant, constant affirmation helped him to see beyond the physical limitations and to foster a resilient and optimistic mindset. And up until today, he still used his voice to inspire others around him, showing that words can be powerful medicine to heal your, to heal your wound by giving hope and new perspective. I was like, so I was devastating. I um, suffer from depression, like um, Antumbite. Yeah, and um, it was a long journey to me, for me to have the tuiting right here. And I'm so, so, so proud of it. Uh, when I was uh, fat and during also my uh, competition as a beat pageant competitors, people make a lot of hurtful comments about my thighs. I was born with big thighs, but it is my shape. And I was so uh, nervous about that. And then my friend told me that it's okay. It's your uniqueness. Embrace your curves. I think you're totally fine. In fact, it is a train for many beauty gurus in uh, foreign to have big thighs. They have a lot of, you know, like swats, right? So it's okay, words can heal you. And similar to how Nick was influenced by his loved ones. You seeing how words can kill, how words can heal. So what are our choices and responsibilities? Every day when we step out of our house, we make a hundred of choices. What do I wear today? What shall I eat for lunch, for dinner? But one of the most important choice is the choice of your word. Any of you recognize this character? Oh, sorry. I have a concluding uh, sentence, but uh, do any of you know this character? You can raise your hand if you know her. Yeah, I can see a lot of hands out there. She's Malala Yousafzai, the youngest ever to receive a Nobel Peace Prize at the age of 17, right? She is an inspiring young woman who transformed her voice into a global crusade. Back when she was a teenager in Pakistan, she spoke out against the Taliban's ban on girls' education. Uh, she's fight for advocating for girls' education, advocating for her rights. Her advocacy delivered through blogs, reviews, and public speeches drew not only international attention, but also posed severe risk to her life. And consequently, in 2012, her courageous stance has led to an assassination attempt on her by militants. But yet, this did not silence her. It only amplified her voice. And following her recovery, Malala continues to empower the youth everywhere, pushing for educational reforms and speaking at platforms as significant as the United Nations. Her speeches and her book, I Am Malala, have inspired millions around the world to support education and to recognize the power of a determined voice. You know, her ability to articulate a clear, compelling message has turned her life struggle into a worldwide movement. Isn't that great? You see how a single voice could speak up for a lot of, believe a lot of person around you and Malala sacrificed herself to do that. She was shot in um, you know, her left forehead and she recovered from that. And I remember an interview from her saying that all of my hopelessness, weakness died on the day she was shot. And she's even more determined to speak up for what she thinks is right. 
Now, in the saga of our lives, whether we choose to be Thanos to wipe out the universe, or whether we choose to be Iron Man to recover the, half, the other part of the universe, is up to you. No, but I'd rather we craft a word of heroes rather than villains. And we, too, can somehow leave some beautiful marks on these beautiful words by choosing to fight for justice, for education, for the one who is sitting next to you, for the ones you love, by speaking up. Use your voice to speak up for what you think is right. So let's decide that we use our words and let it be the messenger for peace, advocate for change, and builder of the futures. I'm honored to have you all here with me listening to my speech. I'm deeply honored, but before we part ways, I challenge you to use your voice to foster kindness, inspire courage, and to empower the one around you. Use your words wisely. Use it with a heart. And let's not just speak, but speak with a purpose. Thank you.